it. And there's a converter scale. Things that you should start doing now as ninth grade is building up is keeping in mind what teachers you're going to ask to do your recommendation letters. That is so important. Build good relationships, good reports, because you'll be able to go to them and get strong letters so that you can go right into those STEM programs in college if that's your desire. And even if it's not your desire, if you did very well in the STEM program, you still want to use that STEM program teacher that you really enjoy. And that can be from your 9th, 10th, 11th, or 12th grade year as you go along. Start building an academic resume, and that means you put on there your community service and your extracurricular participations that you're doing. How many of you are actually doing extracurricular activities? Because I know sometimes it can be... I work with students all the time, and they're juniors and seniors, and I'll say, what extracurricular activities have you done? And they'll say, none. So what is, what's going to set you apart from that other student? Because if you're neck and neck with someone, and you have a 3.5, they have a 3.5, you have a 1980, and they have a 1980, and you're both applying to Harvard, who's going to get that spot? You or them, if they took five extracurricular activities and you didn't have any, who has the spot now? You? No. The other student. So you guys have got to get involved with extracurricular activities as well as, and there are some scholarships will say you have to have a hundred and something community service hours. But if you don't only have any, then you won't be able to apply for that particular scholarship. FastWeb, okay, www.fastweb.com. Create a profile, and you need your parents when you're creating that profile also because they're going to ask them ask you questions about your parents that you don't know. Now, parents, this website will send your children scholarships to their email. That's it. How easy is that? You're not doing any work. All you have to do is take the initiative, open up the email, see if you and your parents qualify, and sit down and fill it out. And I tell parents all the time, scholarships should not be an option for your children to decide they want to do College is not getting any cheaper, it's getting more expensive. We're not making more money on our jobs, we're actually making less. So how do we actually accommodate gaining a degree? You want college to be a return on investment, not an overbearing debt. And that's what it's becoming. Okay? Most parents are having to take out Parent PLUS loans. Keep in mind, parents, that is your responsibility. Your children have no obligation. And you will pay that while they're in school. So if you have a mortgage, you have other kids in private school, and you have monthly bills, you will also have that Parent PLUS loan bill as well. As well as them having a loan that they're going to have to pay back when they get out of school in those four years. So please push your children to apply to as many scholarships as possible. It is not an option. Children will pass up scholarships simply because they don't want to write an essay. Or two, because some scholarships might require two. Most schools, even here at Morgan State, to get into Morgan State University, they have a scale that's their scholarship base. And they tell you if you come in with a GPA of and a test score of, you can get even all the way up to a presidential scholarship. That means you're walking into Morgan State free of charge. But if you don't do your part, someone else will walk, walk into Morgan State free of charge while you're on the back burner trying to take out all those student loans and have all that debt to pay when it's time to end school. And so when your children are seniors, and they have four, three more years, because they're all ninth graders. Are you a ninth grader, sister? Yeah, I know they are. Are you a ninth grade? What grade? You're a senior. Okay. So now the stakes are even higher, because there are so many things you should have already done. So if you have not done, then when the break time, see me, just so I can quiz you and see just how much you've done. So I can tell your parents whether you're going to college or not. Because see, some seniors say, I'm going to college, but you've done nothing to get there. No college is going to take you if you don't prepare. He's so that's going. ninth grade. He's oh, he's going, he's going. Robert, because his parents are going to push him. But you got to do your part to get there. Okay, grandparents, grandparents, you're going to get pushed. But you've got to do your part to get there. And remember, your parents can't do it for you. Only you can do it. Don't allow a college to have to pick you. Be prepared to pick the college of your choice. Because that's the goal. You want to be able to go where you want to go and not be forced to go somewhere because you didn't meet the mark. So keep doing very well. You should be proud of yourselves. Parents, you should be proud of them. Stay with the STEM program. Don't get discouraged. It's a great program. I know it might get harder as the years go by, but keep pushing, stay with it, and you'll do well. Good luck, and college is right around the corner. It's going to go really fast. Prepare now so that later when you get to your senior year, you're not struggling and scrambling and trying to figure out how to make it happen. You already will know how to make it happen. 
Thank you guys. Enjoy the rest of your program and have a great day. Little quiz here. What was some of the things Regina pointed out? You've been quiet. <clears throat> what are some of the things she pointed out? What's the name? Kendall. 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 <clears throat> what's, what's one of the things she pointed out? That you should get a scholarship every chance you get. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Brandon. Brandon Sanford, Brandon. Make sure that you prepare very early in high school and don't wait until the last second, such as in your senior year. Mm -hmm. Which one can I just point out? My name is Samza. Uh, Sample. Samza. Um, to work on your SAT and your ACT, start now preparing. My name is Carmen. Um, to work on extracurriculars. Yes, yes, yes. Um, my name is Michaela. That you need to start looking at colleges now. Yes, yes, sir. I didn't forget you. Um, <laughs> that's how you. That's how you fool. <laughs> you miss it. Um, you choose your college, not the college chooses you. Yeah. What does that mean? Basically, that you choose where you want to go. Oh, excellent, excellent, excellent. Quiz time again. I'm sorry. Trivia time again. There is, uh, uh, we, we like to always integrate history into our programs because I think it's very important. Um, first trivia question is what did Carl Edward Anderson do? Does anyone know the answer? Carl, Carl Edward Anderson. It's not me. <laughs> <laughs> In this day and age of technology, people have blackberries and Apple's Carl Edward Anderson. Does anyone know what he did? No. No. Carl Edward Anderson. Anybody? Anybody? Carl Edward Anderson. You got an answer? What is it? No. No. Carl Edward Anderson. What did he say? He said telegram. No. I'll give you a hint. It has something to do with something that you see every day. Coffee. Because cars? No. 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 Can we have a hint? I'm not giving too many. He made the first stop. Wait, what? He made the first stop when passport. No. 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 You check it every day before you leave the house. No. 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 Carl Edward Anderson. Oh, she's going to give another track. Um, Somebody wants to know. Text messaging? No. 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 You check it every day before you leave the house. You adjust your day to it. Time? Time. No. He didn't get time. No. 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 Again, you, you check it every day before you leave the house, and you adjust your day to it. Schedule. Okay. Schedule. Who are you going to say? The camera? See? No. No, you get close. You get close. He said thermostat. No, you get close. You get close. Paul. Anderson. Please remember this thing. No, he was not a dentist. Let's jump. He was the first African American meteorologist. Harry, we have someone who said weather. What did they say, meteorologist? That's why he gets a hand up there. Huh? I, do. I check it every day. Huh? I'm going to give you one more. Give me one more, then I'll take a break. I'll give you one more. There's another gentleman who had many patents. His name was Frederick McKinley Jones. Now, he had a lot of patents. If you could name one of those patents, you would get a prize. Patents. A lot of things he invented. Frederick McKinley Jones. No. We asked the same question at the uh, USA Science Engineering Festival, and we had a number of students got that. Can I get prize? No, Pam was excluded. Frank McKinley Jones, he has a number of patents. One of the things he did 
help revolutionize the food industry. Take a guess. Take a guess. What do you think one of the answers is? The mechanical what? What is that? Industrial revolution. No, no, no. Yes! You're right. Say that again. Electric food. Electric food. For trucks. For trucks to keep our food cool. So, so tell me. Electric food. He's right. The refrigeration unit for trucks. So what did he win? He won a Dave and Buster's gift card. Now, any questions before we take our break? Because we definitely have um, some snacks in the hallway, but we also want you to be able to uh, interact with the exhibitors, find a little bit more about them. Good. Yes, Dr. Wheat. Yeah. Uh, Please use the mic. <laughs> Just a little testimony to uh, the uh, power of network. Uh, last weekend, I was in Orlando, Florida at a conference, and while I was there, I met this young woman who is a uh, physics professor at RPI, eventually a Polytechnic Institute. She's a black woman. She's got to be one of a handful of people in the country of her gender and race with that degree doing what she's doing. And so, uh, the young lady who's interested in physics, I'm going to give you her name, and I want you to call her and tell her that you spoke to me. One of the things that you want to do, young people, as you go forward with your careers, is try to look for mentors, people who are doing what it is that you're doing, so that you can get advice on how they did it, and get advice on what you need to do so that you can be successful too. Okay? Network. And on that note, we're going to take a break. Please step in the hallway so you can interact with our exhibitors. Um, this brings with the Tuxedo Research for FDMs, uh, Mr. Cooper with the IT Computer Institute as well as uh, Mrs. Saunders with the Tuxedo Research Institute. Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
And if you notice, we hook it up to a large screen so we can get cool pixels and higher resolution. Uh, if you also notice, the video graphics card. Tell me what that video graphics card is. Uh, what we have here are two ATI Radeon HD 6870s. They're both uh, running in Crossfire, which means they're both uh, utilizing both they're use, utilizing both the cards in order to generate a picture on the screen, and they are clocked at 900 megahertz. Both. So our motto is building futures by building computers. We feel if you can put a computer together and take it apart, you can do anything. So enjoy technology, but remember, technology can also make you a lot of money. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Joey Price, and I am the CEO of Jumpstart HR. Uh, it's a managed HR services firm where basically we partner with businesses and help them with their hiring, their HR compliance, and then we also help with career development, uh, doing resume revisions, career counseling, uh, mock interviews, uh, and some of our work has been seen in Career Builder, The Ladders, Monster.com. Uh, so we're very passionate, and I'm very passionate about leadership and professional development. Uh, I'm 25, so I'm not that far removed from high school, so uh, I know what it's like to sit in, in your seats. Uh, and I must say that I'm kind of jealous of you guys because uh, I work in HR, but I think the coolest professions are actually in STEM. Uh, you guys handle a lot of different things, uh, from science, obviously, and computers and engineering. And so I wanted to play a game very quickly uh, to get you guys thinking about the impact that STEM has on our lives. So I'm not going to ask you to stand up. Uh, but I will ask you to give a round of applause for four things. Uh, give a round of applause if you woke up to an alarm clock this morning. Right. Uh, if you ate breakfast or had lunch. So. If you ate breakfast or had lunch. Good. Uh, also, give a round of applause if you came here on an automobile. And, uh, all right, if you want to, <laughs> sneakers, so ergonomics of sneakers, that's important. And then lastly, uh, clap if you have a Facebook page. All right. <laughs> so all of those are areas where STEM impacts our lives. Uh, and you can see those are on a daily basis, a consistent basis. So again, you guys are setting yourselves up to be um, influencers in everyone's life. Uh, people who won't even know you and, and you won't know them. Uh, so, I wanted to let you all know from a jobs perspective where the uh, STEM careers are. And according to the U.S. Department of Labor, six states, uh, California, Texas, New York, Florida, Virginia, and Illinois, hold 40% of all STEM jobs. So if you're looking for a place to move and you want to know if the career industry is good, you know, Texas is a good place, Virginia is just down the street, uh, New York, uh, California, Florida, uh, and Illinois. So I'm here to talk about leadership and professional development and I wanted to tie it specifically to careers in STEM. So I have three things that I want you all to remember. I want you to remember that as a STEM leader, you are to, and you can repeat after me, think, think learn, 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 and create. create. Okay? Think, learn, create. TLC. Can you guys remember that? <laughs> All right, so I'll be really brief. Um, as you think, I want you to understand that critical thinking and effective communication skills are required in all STEM careers. Uh, no matter what field you're in, whether it's science, math, engineering, technology, you're going to have to think on a critical level. You're going to have to inspect, uh, question, reason, come up with your own ideas. And so it's going to require you to have a thought process that's really engaging and really heavily involved in what you're doing. So uh, when you compare that with some of your classmates and some of your peers, uh, you're going to be in a unique position where your thought processes and reasoning may not look like your peers. 
you guys may question things that your peers may not question. You know, you may be watching the Olympics and someone may say, how many, what's a, a favorite Olympic sport? Do you guys watch the Olympics? Basketball? Okay. So someone who's not in STEM may say, wow, uh, Usain Bolt was very fast. But someone in STEM may say, what was the velocity that he was traveling at? You know? <laughs> so there's a, a very sharp contrast between what a non-STEM person will think about the world and what you'll think about the world. And I want you guys to understand that that's okay. That's part of what you are doing in your field. Uh, and so if someone says, man, why are you asking that? That's not important. Actually, it is. It's very, very important. And if you speak to any, uh, I'm glad we talked about track because I, I used to run track. Um, you talk to any coach in any level, they will talk to you about not just the practicing, but they'll talk about the science of running. And they'll talk about the science of conditioning. And when you go to college, you talk about a lot of these things. So those are very important. So I want you to understand that too. So a practical application for thinking like a STEM professional, uh, learn to question why and do so intelligently. All right? So the next thing is learn. You say learn? Learn. All right. So I hate to break it to you, but you will never stop needing to learn. <laughs> Ever. Your role as a STEM professional is to constantly learn and interpret and share what you've learned to others and say why it's important. Uh, so you're going to be in a unique position from your peers uh, when it comes to learning. You're going to need different mentors than your peers need. So for example, uh, I'm glad uh, the gentleman over here is connecting the student with the physicist at RPI. You'll need that mentor, but maybe someone in studying physical education or studying computer science, they're not going to need the specific skill sets and understanding that a physics professor will have. Uh, so the practical application for learning, uh, I challenge each of you all to identify three mentors who are practicing in your desired career field and learn from them. Um, mentors are very important because it's, it's, I don't encourage people to just get mentors at the next level. I encourage people to get mentors that are at their dream career. And the reason being is because they've already unlocked all the doors that you have to unlock. And sometimes they've run into dead ends, sometimes they spent more time on something that, uh, that you think is the right path, but they'll say, maybe have you considered this? So find a mentor that's doing your dream job and understand the steps that it takes along the way. All right? Uh, lastly, create. Can we say create? Great. Great. All right. So uh, the main role in your career, career as a STEM professional is to see the world as it is and then make it better. All right. We had the trivia question and we, we understand about uh, different inventors that have come along and made the world a better place. So all STEM professionals, are that's your role. You, you help make our world better. Um, you help our cars drive more efficiently. You help our food be more healthy. Uh, you help our um, you you help with computers. And, uh, I'm a Mac fan, so if you, anyone works at Apple later down the road, let me know. I'll be your best friend. Um, <laughs> but you're going to be in a unique position again, where you see the world differently than your peers. So you're going to have to challenge and create and ask questions that they're not going to ask. Uh, so a practical application would be as you pick your career. Begin to identify the one problem that matters to you most and how you want to go about fixing it. Um, a lot of times, especially if you choose to go down the graduate uh, degree path and get a doctorate, uh, your, most of your work is in answering a specific question. And if you can answer a question and do so and it impacts a lot of people, then you will leave behind a great legacy. So think, learn, and create. Uh, and we talked on some other things that were very important earlier today uh, and from a jobs perspective I wanted to help share why some of the people that came earlier why they talked about things so extracurriculars are very important uh, because help extracurriculars help you with your networking skills and I can tell you as a person who helps companies hire people about 80% of jobs are from referrals 
So it's not from going online, filling out an application, and praying that somebody calls you back. Most of the jobs are from knowing someone that works there and then referring you to the back career. And again, that's 80%. So that's, for math people, how many out of five is 80%? Four. Okay, good. I don't have the David Busters uh, gift card, but <laughs> you guys are sharp today. Uh, and again, uh, with extracurriculars, people do business with people that they like. So sometimes uh, you'll have people with similar skill sets, but it's do I like this person versus do I like this person more? And sometimes that's when it, what it comes down to. Uh, I also encourage you as you do your extracurriculars uh, to pick up what I call lifetime sports, like tennis, golf, running, uh, and it's not a sport, but uh, volunteering as well because you'll meet people that you can network with and share what you do and they can help you move your career along. Um, college prep, uh, it, it's very important that you prepare. How many freshmen do we have? Mostly freshmen, sophomores, juniors, seniors, seniors, okay, all right. So if you don't get into your dream school right away, it's not the end of the world. Um, Recently, there has been a lot of money pumped into community colleges, and a lot of community colleges actually focus on STEM. Uh, so if you can identify a community college that you can go to for a lot cheaper than a, a four-year